there, I'm here with mixed media artist Ray Missigman, and she is making, well, lovely magnets, <laughs> right? Yes, and we're using a combination of text and some words that I've printed on my typewriter at home. Um, I like to mix them up, but for today's purposes, we're just gonna add one to the canvas. And we're going to be using a gel medium to adhere it to the canvas. And then we're gonna make some really fun paint out of gesso and water-soluble gel crayons. So I love the fact that you said that you printed it out of your typewriter. That's sort of showing the way that we are in the world, exactly, right? Exactly, <laughs> right. Mixing it up a little bit. Exactly, and I think that, you know, it's nice. You can either do found book text, you can do something that you actually, you know, Right, you might have do. a favorite quote that came on a birthday card or something that you found on a menu somewhere. Anything that um, you wanna see every day when you open your refrigerator. So now you're using gel medium simply as a wet adhesive and you've covered your canvas and now you're gonna cover it with a second coat, you know, collage style. And just a quick note for anybody who might use this with like an inkjet printer or anything like that, the ink might run if you put right. it over and that's why yes. you used a typewriter. Exactly. And even if it were to run a little bit for this project, it wouldn't be so bad. But I found with the text papers and the typewriter, you get very little of that. So while that word is drying, I'm gonna mix some paint. And to do that, I'm gonna rub the water-soluble gel crayon right over my palette. And just By the way, I love that your palette is like an old hotel room key. That's I love kind it. of totally genius. I like them because I use them over and over again. And these totally look like lipsticks to me, but you know, know especially with all the colors that are so hot right now, I they're saw a girl so the other juicy. way wearing neon orange lipstick. Oh, they're juicy. And then I had loaded my palette with a little bit of gesso. Kind of makes it a little bit thicker. Um, so I like to mix it in with these. And it gives, it gives me a chance to use these more as a paint and less as a crayon. So now that I've mixed that up on my palette. You have sort of a pastel sherbet color. I know, color. I like it. And I'll show you how we can knock that up a notch too in a minute. So first I'm gonna add some to a piece of this canvas because I'll tell you what this is for later, but we want it to be drying. And I'm using a palette knife to just smear it over the top. And as I do, you can pick up some of those colors coming off of the palette knife too. Now if I wanted to knock that up a notch, I could just put a little bit of the crayon right on the thing and add a little bit like this. Oh, except I probably should add gesso and not gel medium. Although, you know, the difference between gesso and gel medium for people who don't know is obviously gel medium is going to be transparent or right. translucent right. and gesso is going to be opaque. So you haven't actually done anything no. negative. It's just a different kind of way instead of whiting it out. And in fact, the color might be a little more intense with a gel medium than with a gesso. And I'll get a nice sheen to this piece too. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider this um, an error. I would just use it as a different piece. Awesome. So then I would take my blank canvas here okay. with my word. Here you go. I've stolen this from you and I'm giving <laughs> it back to you now. And then I would add a little more of this to the palette and I'll show you how this we can like make this. This is like being an incredible, you know, paint chemist. Right, exactly. Make your own paints. And you know what I like about this too is this is great for travel because when I travel on an airplane, you can't really take a ton of liquid or no, paint or anything like you that. Can't. But you can certainly take some crayons with you, and then if you put into your checked luggage a small thing of gesso or gel medium, then you can mix up your own paints so that when you get to your destination, obviously, then you can have the fun of painting, painting. on vacation, exactly. which is something I love right. to do. Now, if you get a little bit on your word, like I've done, you can either leave it depending on what looks you're look going for or while the gesso and the paint is wet you can actually just take a paper towel and move it off to the side well one of the things that's great too when you seal something with gel medium on top right is that it makes it easier to wipe Thank things you. off exactly and I like the finish and there's another finish we're going to use on this today too so here's a piece with the word on it and the paint is already dry and it has a chalky kind of texture to it. And I like to add marks over the tops of things. So what I would do is I would take this and I would add a coat of glaze over the top. It's a glaze top coat. And that just gives me a nice, smooth finish to do marks on when it's dry. Well, I was also gonna say, like, even if your finish ends up matte, the nice thing about top coats is you can decide, oh, I want it to be shiny. Absolutely. Or in fact, if you have a shiny and you want it to be matte, then you can decide to add a top coat that makes right. it matte. You're the boss exactly. of your supplies. <laughs> I like to use a lot of markers and they work really nicely over the top of this. So this would take a few moments to dry as well. And then once it was dry, you can see a little bit of a sheen to that one. I would take a piece of the painted canvas that's already dry and cut a shape out of it. 
we'll now use. one of the great things that the gesso has been doing is I see how easily you're cutting this with scissors and the gesso has actually hardened that canvas a little bit, it right? It has. It's given it a lot of stability. And I like to kind of mess uh, the why edges. Why are you up? ruining your heart? Is what I'm wondering. <laughs> I like to make the edges a little funky, so I kind of just wrinkle it up and fray those a little bit, so it looks less perfect. And then I'm not even going to clean this off. I'm going to dip it right into my gel medium because I'll get more color that way. And oh yeah, it's add, a pretty see, pink now. Yeah, and add some to the top. It even has a little gesso on there. It just keeps adding more and more of a painterly effect Well, to you it. know what I think is so cool is right now, if you tilt that a little bit, we can see there's a sheen on top of it that's shiny, and yet right. the canvas has that matte, matte finish. finish. And then with it. the gesso mixed in where you adhere, so now you're getting beautiful contrast between right. the shiny and the matte. So once this was dry, I would be able to add marks to it using um, adult crayons or India ink pens, anything like that. And I think that I have one here, oh, here's one, that I can show you that has marks on it that I've done with some crayons and some India ink and that sort of can thing. Can we add some marks so I can see? Absolutely, yes. Now, one of the things I noticed is that you're using basically larger and smaller. Now, did you use two different pen sizes? No, I just actually filled in thicker with one. And I, again, I like to kind of keep it to the areas where I don't have much going on so that I can bring a little focus to it. And it just gives it some character. And you wouldn't have to do uh, abstract marks. You could draw a floral or you could um, sketch something on it. And these crayons are great for getting a little texture. So on now the these edges. are not water soluble crayons. These, these are, are not. These, not. these would are just regular twist up crayons. Correct. If you did something over the top of these, you would get some nice resist from them. So if we look ahead at some of the finished pieces that you brought, I mean, you're mm -hmm. working very small, and I know that working small can be fun and exciting. What are the reasons that you work small? I like to work small. It started as a testing sort of thing, testing different supplies and techniques and ideas, and as it grew, it became a way to get a little bit of something you love down in a small area, and I love that. And it's true, when you have a limited amount of time, small project, small canvas, you get right. it all done. Exactly. This has been awesome and exciting, and I'm ready to make my own paint.